Oh, what's up guys? Today we are gonna talk about memorizing or calculating any day of the year. Now, I, I know what you're thinking. I've already done this video a few years back, but I figured it needed an update since it's 2020. And in that video, I actually only covered up from 2018 to 2019 and I didn't really consider the future. So that video is now outdated. So I'm gonna redo it. I'm basically going to give you the simple tools to just calculate this year and a few years from now. Further down in this video, timestamp right here, I'm gonna tell you how you can do this for absolutely any date in the history of mankind, past or the future. Whoa. Enough of me talking, let's get started. All right, first things first, you're gonna need some kind of basic code to represent the day of the week, all right? It's very simple. Zero is a Sunday, one is a Monday, two is a Tuesday, three is a Wednesday, four is a Thursday, five is a Friday, six is a Saturday. Sunday is kind of like the reset of the week, which is why it's back to zero, and then Monday one, two, Tuesday, and so on. It's pretty straightforward. So what is a date made up of, right? We have a day of the month, we have a month, and we have a year. Those three things are gonna create some kind of numeric code, and we're gonna basically add them all up, divide them by seven, and then that will give us some number between zero and six. All you have to do is translate that back to the day of the week, and that is the day of the week that whatever date you're trying to calculate falls on. As simple as that. So let's start with the hardest part to memorize, I think, and uh, it's not that hard, is the months. There is a specific code, I've calculated it, there's different versions of this, but this is the way I do it, and there's a specific small number you gotta remember for each month. So I'm gonna walk you through this with a little mnemonic to help you remember each one. January is the number five. So just picture in January, there's a ton of snow in winter, five inches of snow, January. February is the number one. And just remember that February is that one month that has the shortest amount of days, just that one month. March is also one. Think of one man marching just by himself, all alone. April is the number four, it's the fourth month of the year, or you can remember that April has that four R sound in it, I guess. May is the number six. I just remember this by thinking, maybe, maybe, if I'm lucky, I'll have some sex today. Sex, six, see what I'm saying? Next one is June, the number is two, and I always like to think that in June, it starts to become summery, it's hot, maybe it's too hot in June. Next one, July is four. That's an easy one. I just think of July 4th. Dun, da, da, da. August is a zero. Think of a gust of wind blowing through a hole and that hole is a zero. September is three. September is kind of the start of school year. So I imagine the very first day of school, maybe a three-year-old is going to its first day in his life of school. To dad that I'm not a fool. October is five. I like to think of somebody grabbing candy out of that Halloween trick or treat bucket with all five fingers to grab some candy. November is the number one and you can remember that because November is kind of like the first, the first kind of cold month at the end of the year, right? At the start of winter. It's not really winter, but let's just say it's the first cold month of that later part of the year. And then finally, December is three. I like to think of Christmas and the three kings. Voila. One small exception on those month codes is if it's a leap year. This year, 2020, is a leap year. And what you do on a leap year is for January or February, you subtract one. So instead of January being five, it's actually four. February one, it's actually zero. I don't even bother thinking about that. I just think if it's a leap year, I just subtract one from my total at the end. One quick thing, how do you tell if a year is a leap year? It's very simple. The last two digits of the year, if it's divisible by four, it's a leap year. So if you can half it twice, basically. Oh, with one small exception. If it's a centennial or a year that is like on a century, like 2100 or 20, 2000, 1600, 1700, that needs to be divisible by 400 in order for it to be a leap year. Let's get back into that. Oh. 
All right, so let's talk about the year code, right? So that's part of the equation. So 2020 is actually gonna be the number five. And I'm giving that to you because it's kind of tricky to calculate. That'll be at the later part of this video. But for those of you that just want the quick way to do this, just know that this year is the number five. And if you wanna know the old years, 2019, 2018, and I think even 2017, you can watch my old video here to see those codes. For the future, I'm gonna give you the next five years so you never have to see me make another one of these videos again. 2021, next year, is the number six. Then 2022 kind of goes back, it's zero. 2023 is gonna be the number one, 2024 is the number three, and 2025 is the number four. All you have to do for this is just think of the actual number. That is the code. So if it's the 28th of a month, then the code for the day of the month is 28. Wow. Now here's where something interesting comes in because at some point I said you got to divide by seven. We're going to do something called modular division, which basically means we're going to divide by seven but keep the remainder. And now you can do this at any stage in the calculation. You don't have to do it at the end when you have a big total. I like to do it at the beginning or in steps when the number is quite small. And I just keep kind of using the result from that to keep going with my sum. So let's take today, the day I'm filming this, which is February 20th, 2020. Now I know for this year, 2020, it's a five. That's the code for the year. All right, so my tally, my running tally is five. I gotta add all these up. Then I typically add the month, it's February. What was the code for February? It was a one. So now I have six. And then I add the day of the month, which was 20. What's six plus 20? 26. Now remember, it's a leap year, so I subtract one. I have 25. And now I do the dreaded part, it's not that scary, the modular division by seven. So I think to myself, how many times does seven go into 25? Three. And what's left over? The remainder of four. So that's my resulting answer. What is the day of the week for the number four? It's Thursday, baby. Let's do Christmas. I don't know, this year, right? December 25th, 2020. So same thing for the year, 2020, it's the number five. December, what was the code? Three, three kings. So right now I have five plus three, that's eight. Now here, because I went over seven, what I'll quickly do in my head is just basically say eight is the same as one. Because if I do modular division on eight, how many times does seven go into eight? It's one with one left over. So that's my code. And I can actually drop that seven and just keep the one and now add the day of the month, which is 25. So one plus 25 is 26. It's a leap year, but it's not January or February, so I don't subtract one. So I have 26, and now I say the same thing. Modular division seven. How many times does seven go into 26? Three times, that's 21. And what's left over? Five. Christmas is on a Friday this year. Okay, so now you know how to calculate the day of the week for any point in time from roughly now to the next five years and a little before. But what if you wanna know anything, right? What if you wanna know, you know, 2050, your birthday, what day that lands on. Now, the calculation's a little tougher, and basically what it hinges on, the month and the day are the same. You know those codes. It's the year, right? I'm giving you the year codes, but there is a way to calculate that. It's a bit annoying, but if you wanna use some memory techniques, you know, you have all the videos I've ever made to help you do that. You gotta remember two more codes. The first code is gonna be for the century. So the 1600s was a zero. That's the century code. And every four years, it's a zero. So the 2000s are a zero. The 2400s will be a zero. The 2800s will be a zero as well. So 1600 is zero. And then the 1700s is a five. The 1800s is a three. The 1900s is a one. And then the 2000s was a zero. And then it repeats. So you can figure that out pretty quickly. So for you advanced folk, you guys want to now calculate the year part. So I gave you the code for the century, right? Just the first two digits of the year, that one was easy. And now it's the two last digits of the year. Now that year could be anything between 00 and 99. That's a hundred different years, hundred different codes. There is a way to calculate it, but I find it annoying and cumbersome. The best way for you to get fast at this is to just have them memorized. I know that sounds like a lot, but it's actually easier than you think. All the codes can be are a number between zero and six. 
So zero, one, two, three, four, five, or six. What I did, and I calculated this for you, and I'm gonna share the list. You don't have to even bother, just learn it. I split up all the years that had zero as the code, all the years that had one as the code, two, three, four, five, and six. And then how did I memorize it? Well, I had an image for zero, one, two, three, four, five, six. You can do that any way you want. Maybe you have a major system. If you don't know what that is, check out my old video here. Or you may have a PAO. If you don't know what that is, check this video out. But basically it's some image that represents that number. And what I did is for each of the years, that was a two digit number that had an image as well. And I just associated those two images together. For example, in my system zero, I have a PAO, so I can use a few different things. Zero is the action of sucking on something or it's a pair of vampire teeth, okay? And then for all of the different years, I use the person doing that sucking or something related to teeth. The first one that has a zero is the year 05, which to me is Abe Lincoln. Did you say Abe Lincoln? So I have an image in my mind of just Abe Lincoln sucking on his hat, his big old Abe Lincoln hat. Another example is one. And some of these I'm flexible with. One seemed easy. I just thought of something in the shape of a one and I tried to think of something related to the person of the year that had that shape. A good example is 17, that has the code one. And my person for 17 is Alex, he's a pilot. So I thought of the fuselage of a plane, it looks like a one. 73 is also code one, it's Batman for me. So I thought of Batmobile, right? It's kind of shaped like a one. It's just one directional. The year 03, that's Jack Black for me. And his code or that code for that year is four. The action for that is actually a punching action. I like actions, they help me remember things better. So I picture Jack Black just beating the hell out of anybody he's talking to. While these may not make much sense to you, I'm trying to explain how I went about memorizing it. So use your own number system to just associate the year picture to that code picture. Got it? Yeah. Here is that list for your enjoyment. You can also download it in the description. If you want a full explanation of the whole step process, whatever it is, it's also in the description below. And it's also mentioned in my book, Remember It. So what's the whole process at this point? Well, okay, if you're gonna do a full thing, right, you usually have the month, day, and year, right? So the month, I'll come up with my code. Then the day, I'll keep that as the code. And I'm tallying up everything as I go, but also dividing by seven, keeping the remainder. So by the time I get to month day, I have a number, nothing too big. And then I add the code for the century. Pretty easy, it's just zero, one, three, or five. And then I figure out my mnemonic, I find the code for that specific two digit year, and then I add that to my total, make sure I've modded by seven, and then I'm left with that one digit, which is the day of the week. Let's do a couple practice ones. 1651, January 31st. Think about it for a second. Let's try another one. What about in the future? 2072, August 30th.
Hey guys, thanks for watching. You can have a lot of fun with this. It's really impressive to tell people, hey, when was your birthday? And you can calculate and say quickly, with a bit of practice, uh, what day of the week that fell on. Thanks for watching, guys. Please like, subscribe, share, and I'll see you in the next video. I'm out.